Hello, and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Today, we are talking about the birth and short life of Henry VIII's son. No, not Henry Fitzroy, but Henry, Duke of Cornwall, the son that he had with Catherine of Aragon in 1511. If you're new here, very special warm welcome to you. I am your host, Heather Tesco. I've been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This channel is where I put all of my episodes from all of my shows as well as tons of extra content like this video right here. So grab a cup of coffee or your beverage of choice. I've got water and let's get right into it. So imagine a moment of sheer joy, a beacon of hope for a kingdom, the birth of a son, an heir, a successor to a throne. This is the story of Henry, Duke of Cornwall, the son of Henry VIII and his queen, Catherine of Aragon. Born January 1st, 1511, his arrival caused England to erupt in joyous celebration. But his life was fleeting, his existence a mere 52 days. So in this video, we're going to talk about the way England celebrated during those 52 days and the jousts and, and just the general celebration that England had. It was a time of immense joy, both for Henry and Catherine personally, as well as for England, because they had a successor, an heir to the throne after all of the decades of the Wars of the Roses, um, they knew that the Tudor dynasty was going to continue without any threats. So the streets were alive with festivity. The fountains ran with free wine for the populace. Bonfires lit at night. Cannons blasted from tower walls. And church bells rang for hours and hours and hours. A public holiday was declared and the entire kingdom joined the party. The New Year's boy, as he was fondly called, was baptized in a grand ceremony. Of course, his mother, Queen Catherine, would not have gone to that ceremony. She still would have been recovering from childbirth. One of his godfathers, King Louis XII of France, sent a gift to the child's nurse, Elizabeth Points, a gold chain worth 30 pounds and also 10 pounds to the midwife who delivered the prince. While Catherine was still secluded after the birth, Henry made a pilgrimage to Our Lady of Walsingham to give thanks for the safe arrival of his son. I think I've done an episode or a mini cast on the shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. It's an amazing place. Uh, right kind of around the time of the conquest in 1066, there was a woman who had a vision. An angel told her that she should recreate exactly what the room that Jesus was born in, the manger, looked like and and the home that he grew up in. And, and so she created this this shrine that people would go to, especially for help in childbirth. And the tradition was that you would walk the last mile or so barefoot. And Henry did that. And he went there to, to give thanks and to give an offering and, and to just kind of have a general thanksgiving for the birth of his son. The prince's birth was celebrated in a tournament, the most lavish that England had seen in living memory. Some say it was the third most expensive event of Henry's reign so far. Henry jousted as Sir Loyalheart in lists that were decorated to look like an enchanted forest. Catherine distributed prizes to valiant knights, followed by a sumptuous banquet in Westminster Palace. Henry also began setting up his son's separate household, appointing dozens of servants and you know, nurses and people who would eventually be tutors. This was 40 men at arms for protection, food tasters, a nurse, a lady mistress, and four rockers to rock the cradle. Anybody who has had a child will kind of remember that it's all well and good when you're rocking the cradle, but then as soon as you leave, it all falls apart. And this was before they had swings and things that you could plug in to keep it moving. So Henry hired four rockers who would take turns keeping the cradle moving. Then, of course, on February 22nd, it all ended. The terrible news arrived. The New Year's boy had died. He lived only 52 days. The cause of death remains unknown, but of course, it wasn't that unusual. Um, his sudden death was a shock leading to speculation of crib death or some kind of respiratory infection. Infant mortality was high in the Tudor era, and this was a cruel example. His funeral was nearly as big as the tournament celebrating his birth. Henry paid 400 pounds for black cloth for the mourner's clothing. 
and for covering the hearse. He was buried in Westminster near the entrance of the shrine of St. Edward the Confessor, though his grave was never actually marked. Catherine was, of course, crushed with grief. Of course she was, intensifying her religious devotion, spending hours on her knees on bare stone to pray, fasting and begging God to send her another child. Elizabeth points the nurse would actually remain a poignant figure in this saga. Despite the tragic turn of events, Henry didn't blame her. He actually granted her an annuity of 20 pounds for life, which was an unprecedented display of kindness and understanding in an era, especially from a man known for his quick judgments and swift penalties. The court moved on as courts do. And the celebrations and grand tournaments would continue. New alliances would be formed. New battles would be fought. But the joy of those initial 52 days, the jubilation that his son had brought when he was born, would forever be a bittersweet memory for Henry and Catherine and in the annals of Tudor history. For Henry and Catherine, their son's brief life would be a time of boundless happiness. It seemed like It all was going to work out for them. Can you imagine how history would have been different if he had lived, um, if he hadn't died? It was, of course, also then a period of devastating loss and a reminder of how fragile life could be, even for those of royal blood. Today, the exact location of the prince's grave is unknown. During excavations for the new high altar in the 1860s, a small lead coffin of a child was discovered. And it may have been the coffin of the prince, but we will probably never know. His grave stands as a symbol of a life that held so much promise, yet was cut short so abruptly. So here's to the little New Year's boy, a prince who lived and died within a span of 52 days, yet managed to leave an indelible mark on England's history. His story reminds us of the fleeting nature of joy, the reality of loss, and the resilience of the human spirit to carry on. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it to the end of this video and enjoyed it and learned something, I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I put out videos like this almost every day. It really helps me grow the channel. And anyway, who doesn't want their YouTube algorithm tutorified? Am I right? Remember, you can still get tickets to TutorCon. Streaming tickets are still available. Um, I still have the early bird discount going on. TutorCon is three days of learning, feasting, new friendships, entertainment. In person, we have it in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. We've got talks from people like Tracy Borman, uh, Carol Ann Lloyd, who has a new book out coming out, The Tutors by the Numbers. We've got about 12 talks, I think, happening. And then there's also extra content just for streamers, for the people coming online. The whole thing is being streamed. And when you get a streaming ticket, you get access to the talks, you get the transcripts. You get the recordings, you get a digital goodie bag with all kinds of extra ebooks and and fun things. Uh, And there's lots of extra bonuses that I'm putting in just for the streaming tickets as well. Uh, Extra entertainment and and fun things to do while the in-person folks are having their feasts and and things like that. So englandcast.com slash tutorcon online will get you all of the information you need for that. And you can enter the code EARLYBIRD to save $10 off of your ticket. So englandcast.com slash tutorcon online. All right, I will talk to you again soon. In the meantime, stay curious, stay kind, and stay hydrated. All right, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.